Hi, I'm Paul from the Frame Team, and today we have another effect tutorial for you. We are going to be creating this 3D logo effect. Uh, one thing to note about Frame is that our lighting is uh, baked into the texture maps of the scene. Uh, so that it can be more performant. And what I'm doing here is not taking a light and projecting it. Uh, I am taking two separate planes and uh, offsetting them to give them the illusion that there is light and shadow. Uh, and then for the second image plane, we have the shader effect where it takes the uh the the logo that you give it inside of the uh nme um uh node material editor and uh then it comes through and it gives you this nice shine effect um so to begin with if we're trying to create this effect we don't necessarily need to test it out uh with node material editor we can do that testing right here in so if we take an image, and we're using the easy panel here, um, then we can we can just grab that and offset it slightly. Then we can grab. a uh this uh shadow that that i created uh using uh, an open source software called krita and i'll show you how to do that in just a second here so then you can already see that we've got most of the effect done now we just do a little bit of a visual offset and this is something that you'll see often in uh, image editors just using a drop shadow, but this is using that effect in 3D, and it's a nice little image. Um, so I just wanted to go over, in case you haven't seen, how to do this in Krita, how to create that little shadow effect. Um, so if you don't have uh, a transparent uh, image for your logo, then this is go then you're going to have to create that transparency. Um, inside of Krita, if you can, so if you have a white or a black background, um, you can do uh, a select color range. Um, and if you're looking for your uh, your that white area, then you'll look at highlights. And if it's a black area, you can look at shadows. Uh, and when you delete it, it should show you this checkerboard pattern because that means that it, there, it's not black, it's not white, it, it's just transparent. Um, then um, you'd save a version of this out. And for the shadow map, um, we can come in here, we can go to settings. We can uh, go to... Um, Oh, wait, 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 it's in image properties. <laughs> and we'll take this and um, crush it down to a grayscale. Um, because then we're not passing through red, green, and blue values. Um, we're only passing through the grayscale and the alpha channel, which makes it a lot more performant. Uh, another thing on performance is that we're using this, uh, this texture um, the, or the, the sizing of this texture is 512 by 512 um, because uh, those multiples of two um, are easier for the computer to, uh, to scale. Um, if you want to read more about that topic, it's a whole extra topic, but uh, using uh, 256, 512 by 512, 1024, um, those uh, image increments uh, are are just a lot easier for the computer to read. Let's go, let's just go with that answer. Um, 
and then it'll give you a more performance scene. Um, so then we set this to grayscale, and then we can go over here to select, select um, opaque, let's do a replace, that's fine, uh, and then uh, add the, oh, well, that's going to turn it to white. We're going to say fill with background color. That's your, your colors here. This isn't too in-depth of a, a Krita tutorial. Um, you can use whatever image processor you like, um, but I'm just kind of quickly going to go through here. Um, and then we're going to say select, deselect, and um, I'm going to go to filters, blur, Gaussian blur. And if you want the the shadow to be uh, to really crisp, then you only need a little bit of blur. But you're going to want some blur in general. Um, so let's over here. This is just 21 pixels. Uh, and then I'm just going to take the opacity down. And then you save that out, and you're done. Um, we're not even going to add a shader effect to uh, this plane. You can, but uh, I don't think the shadow map needs a shader effect at this time. So then we can take um, all of this into Node Material Editor. Uh, oh, I already have that set up. Let's start here again. Let's start with a fresh node material editor. So once again, we're going to take this whole portion and we're going to call it shader output. That was a shift drag to make the frame and then double click to minimize it. Now we're going to take this color four and we're going to delete that. So we just have our Fragment output. This is where all of our magic is going to happen. Now we're going to find the texture node. From here, we're going to grab this and plug it into the RGB channel, and we're going to upload our logo work. Now you scroll down and you see that it is taking the color but it is not taking the alpha channel. And you take the alpha channel, and now this is exactly what you get in frame if you import that uh, image with the alpha channel on it. So if this is all you need, go through frame to do that. Don't come in here to NME because that's just an extra step. Um, but if you do want those shader effects, you're gonna need to be here. So. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to create that vertical shine. Um, and to do that, we're going to talk about the mesh UVs. So on this plane, here I'm going to grab a vector splitter. And this UV output uh, is a a a, uh, a two value output so we're getting the x and the y values from this mesh uv node and it's going to grab your your, your uvs um uh, regardless of this it's not always going to be a flat plane if you have a full 3d model that has its uv maps uh fully unwrapped then it's it's going to to, to look at that full um uh output so um to to visualize what we have going here first i'm going to remove these channels and i'm going to take the x value and so we have um we're just getting the all of the values along this uv that you know from zero to one and if we tried to do that in y then we would be getting the vertical values uh, right now we want well we'd be getting the yeah vertical values right now we're getting the horizontal values from zero to one um 
Interestingly enough, uh, this is not part of the shader, but it's kind of fun to visualize, is taking this um, X, Y node, oh, oh, not the vector merger, the color merger. Slight detour to help visualize, we're going to grab the color merger and we're going to plug into uh, the X into R and the G into uh, the Y into G. And so we can see here is the zero to one space uh, going across the one way and the zero to one space going across the other way and how they kind of intertwine. It's cool. We don't need that yet. Um, and we're not going to need that for this tutorial. Right now, we're just going to use the X value. Um, so the cool thing about this X value as well is that uh, it can be overdriven. So if I grab an add node and I pull it in here and I plug this in, we can get values greater uh, than one, and now it's going to be all white, uh, especially once you get to one, and then we can also grab values that are less than one. So it's just existing in this whole plane, um, and we get to mess with those values. So um, what we're going to do is we're looking once again for um, an oscillation. We're looking for something that will go to infinity because we want those shines to keep coming. Um, now, like the other tutorial, we don't want to have uh, the value coming and then coming back and then coming and coming back. Um, but we're still going to be using the sine node. And once again, I have values plugged in here. <laughs> so, um, we're just going to be using this in a different way and using uh these these 3d programs and and getting animations to happen um we're going to see the sine node a lot uh sine waves get used in a number of different uh applications and i'm going to be bringing them up time and time again uh at almost any time there's there's animation uh where the sine wave is going to be used in one form or another um Um, so, what we're going to be doing for that is we're going to take that sign node and we're going to plug it here into the fragment output. And now, if we took this just straight float value and we started cranking this value up, um, then you can see as we come over this crest that now we're coming back down. And this is just really cool that it's like looking down on this sine wave now because it's taking those values and, and, and going from zero to one. You're looking down on that and it is cresting and falling. Um, so we can automate this by taking the time node and plugging that in where we had just a standard float. And suddenly we have a cool movement. So now what are we gonna do with this movement? We are going to make that movement work with this texture. So now we have a grayscale output and we have an RGB output. We can't just uh, uh, blend them together because that's not gonna work for this effect. Um, so this is a great time to talk about the two different ways that, that we uh, generally see um, uh, taking, taking these outputs and putting them together.
And now I'm going to go with the with the, the wrong one for this first, so we can see uh, is multiplying them together. Now, if we take this, oh, first uh, we're going to do the conversion. So we're going to grab a color merger, and that's how we do the, the conversion over here. Is we take this and this um, any kind of uh, grayscale output, and then you plug it into R, G, and B. Uh, to get that on the RGB spectrum, and then you can multiply them together. I just want to show real quick what happens, because I like showing these partial answers, of what happens when you just plug it into the R channel. So you're, you're just getting a red wave. And that's another thing where if you wanted to... Uh, instead of having to multiply this by uh, a, a, a red color, um, you could just grab the red channel. Um, it's not gonna be super useful. Usually you wanna have more control over that, but it's an option. Uh, and then taking red and green and mixing them makes yellow. Uh, this this is uh, because of the, the different way that RGB handles things from uh, and the way that light and pigment work on color. Color's pretty crazy. You can look up that topic. I'm not going to go over how all of those things mix together, but um, we're going to stop getting off track, and I'm going to multiply these two values together. And so now what you're seeing is that um, when the, the, the crest of the wave gets to the one value, now we're seeing the color as it is. And then when it comes back down to, to uh, the, the zero to negative one values, then we're going uh, and, and, and it's, it's dipping back into that, those uh, black values. And so now we take the alpha channel back and you can just see that it's not transparent here, but it is black. So, uh, and then one of the cool kind of another side tangent, this is all going to be side tangents. Thank you for bearing with me. <laughs> um, is we take a multiply and we plug this multiply in and we take the sign multiply or we take the, the sign output values and we plug that into this alpha channel. Now you're going to be getting those areas that that uh, were black and making those transparent. And if this is what you want for your logo, you're done. Uh, save out that URL, use that code, bring it into frame, put a bunch of them together, and you'll have just this uh, cascading uh, transparent logos. That's not what we're going to be creating, but oh, I wanted to show this being plugged into the RGB um so that you can see how this multiply is working it's it's just taking those color values and uh yeah multiplying them and creating this but if we want to create light the easier option is to add them together instead of multiplying so we are going to grab an add node and we're going to take those are GB values, and we're going to add them together, and now we're going to plug them in. So now if we grab, oh, um, if we grab this alpha, and we see it's still going to go into those dark areas, that's because once again we're overdriving, and the easiest solution to this um is to grab a clamp i think that in in the long run this is the best solution for this option because now it's just going to say it's going to take those values that are above or below one and it's just going to hit that and stop there uh leaving that value at one so it it, it doesn't scale the entire hole it just as it says it clamps it so if it goes above one then it's like no for these values it's one and if it goes below zero for those values it's just going to stay uh, flatlined at zero so now we have 
a shine. It starts out in full color. It shines up and it goes back to full color. So once again, if this is the effect we're looking for, it, it's perfectly performant to say we're done. But we're not done because there's some more cool things that we can do with this. So I'm going to take, um, and, and this, is, this is another thing to think about, whenever you get, you want to isolate certain portions, you can always take this fragment output and just plug that back in uh, further down the line so that you can see exactly what's going on. Um, it, it really helps to isolate problems. Sometimes if you're trying to just from the back of the line say, well, what's going on somewhere in the middle there, sometimes it can be really hard, especially on subtle effects. So we're gonna take this fragment output, plug it right back into the color merger, and we're going to, um, we're going to find a rotate value because I don't want a straight up sine wave happening. I want it to have a little bit of that tilt to it. So we're going to grab a rotate 2D. <clears throat> and we're going to take this and plug it in. And as a default, it will do nothing. So then now we can real time take this value and change it. So now we're getting a full rotation. Somewhere around 85 is pretty good. And now you can see how that shine is now going to come up at an angle. And take this value, we plug it right back in, and you're getting a shine at an angle. Grab the alpha channel again. And there we go. But now that bar seems a little bit thick. <clears throat> it uh, for for the time that it crosses, the, the logo becomes entirely white, and that's not exactly what we want either. We want a little bit of control. Uh, one of the coolest ways to grab that kind of control is that when you have black and white values and there's gradient, the easiest way to control that gradient is with a smooth step node. So we're going to take that sine wave, even before the clamp, and we're going to drag out some values. And then we're going to plug this right back in. So input into the smooth step, output back into the clamp, and we are going to take these. And if you take this value and you have it at zero, zero, you can see there is a sharp line happening here. Uh, it, it is taking all of that gradient entirely away. Uh, the moment the value becomes positive. Now it's kind of like a clamp node, um, but it's a little bit more sophisticated. So now if we take that value and we put it to one, um, then you're gonna get all of that fall off again. And if we take the bottom value and turn it to one, then you're going to get the same thing as if they were both zero, it's gonna take that just for much anyway. Um, <clears throat> so this is, um, now I'm gonna create my uh, so, then you can take this value and you can, uh, <laughs> uh, I wanted to go to 0.9. You can reduce it by a whole bunch. And one of the things that I find uh, really helps this effect is to take that one and to also overdrive it just a little bit. It helps give that really smooth um, fall off throughout and keep color so it never, um, it, it, it never crests quite as hard. A little bit of organization here. And once again, we're put into a position where that actually looks pretty good. We're, for our intents and purposes, um, we can, we can call this done. Um, but before calling it done, uh, looking at the shader graph, um, there's one thing that I wanted to talk about. 
Oh, right, 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 right. Before, before we get to that, um, we can also change uh, the, the uh, we have a, a little bit more effect on the, the duration or how many um, uh, waves come through. I just wanted to add this multiply node. And we can add it right before, I'm going to add it right before this. So this is just going back in and taking our sine wave. And multiplying it. If we multiply it by three, then we're seeing them happening in a little bit of a quicker progression. I think two is a great value there. It's just looking nice. I mean, and, and this is one of those things where it's kind of just scaling. You're kind of scaling away. Um, you, so you're gonna you're gonna change that fall off. You're gonna change all of that. If if we take it to ten, you're gonna see these <laughs> these, these small lines. It's like you're just pushing that further away. Um, but I think two is going to be the value that we're looking for. Um, so then, uh, when it comes to efficiency and performance, uh, one of the major topics here is, um, getting this graph to flow as quickly as possible. Every time, um, the, the, the compiler or every time the software comes through, it's going to look and it's it's going to say, are you changing this float? And uh, it wants to know that that's going to stay the same. And if it knows that that's going to stay the same, then it's going to go through quicker. So if we tell it, there's no way that we're going to change this value, um, then we can just go over here to type and say constant. So at this point, we don't have uh, the ability inside a frame, and we're going to get this at some point, um, to be able to edit these values. But until that time, and, and even um, then, when you're not using these nodes, when you're not changing these values, we can set them to constant. The whole thing will run a lot smoother. Let me grab this over, set it to constant. There we go. Uh, and then we can take this whole thing, make it a little nicer, and then we can add a frame around it. We can call this shine wave. Yes, I intend my puns. And then we are going to change this value up a little. Let's look at that. And then now we're good. Um, oh, right. I, one last thing I wanted to bring up in here is that. Let's take this outside of this. Is that now when we collapse this, we can even change this value. To change this port, you just click on the on the, the little circle there, and you can call it V input. And so we know now that if if you want the shine wave, then you can attach it to any number of, of different things. You just need to input it at, uh, give it a UV input, and then it's going to give you an RGB output. Real clean, and then you can change whatever logo that you have here. So if you don't want to do this, this is just going to be up uh, in the NME materials, and you can add your own logo in, just change it, and then you don't even have to worry about what's going on under the hood. Uh, you can copy this shine wave. Um, and then all we have to do is save as unique URL, wait for it to generate our code, and we copy that, we can go back into frame, and we can delete this asset, grab effects. 
shaders. Let's grab the shader again. Go into precision editing. And paste in our new effect. So go into our precision. Sixty. Negative ninety. And what we have is the formation of our tutorial. There we go. We created a shine, and I will leave that code for you down in the uh, uh, comment area, or not comment area, you know, you know, under the video, down there. <laughs> um, yeah, this is the end of our video. Um, and all right. Uh, thanks so much for watching. And uh, I hope you have fun creating your own variations on this sort of logo effect. All right.